Hello everyone. Today we're looking at this. This is a British Telecom BT Jade. Uh, now the phone is actually manufactured by NEC. Um, I don't actually know the model of the particular phone that obviously BT called it a Jade. Um, I would have to look that up. Um, I did actually used to own one of these, believe it or not. Not this very one. Uh, this was one I bought many years ago. Um, the one I had um, unfortunately died a death. Uh, the talk time on it wasn't too brilliant either. The batteries on these weren't the best to say the least. Um, I struggled to get anything over about 30-40 um, minutes of talk time. Of course nowadays with smartphones that's you know that's not a lot at all. Um, so let's take a look inside. This is what the box looks like. Um, I'll be getting a whole bunch of requests to do one of these. Um, I did finally find this one in storage, so I pull it out. I'm hoping it will power on because um, I've not actually tried it. So right off the bat, um, this is what you got. You got a whole bunch of pamphlets. Um, now, of course, this phone, um, like I said, is a British Telecom rebadge. Um, the, uh, the, the there are actually the, there is this phone. This phone does exist uh, on other cellular providers. Um, for example, this one here. This is an uh, an American version. Uh, the keys are square, but it's the same phone basically. Um, coincidentally, what does that say? Uh, made in Mexico. MP5A1B3. Um, so make it out what you will. Um, but I guess that's the model of that one. Um, and I did one. Uh, this one is from the Americas as well. It's got the same same sort of keypad layout, but it's got the letters on it. This is an Ameritech badged one, so presumably this was also for the American market. Uh, and this will be an MP5A1B7. Uh, also made in Mexico by the looks of it. Um, okay, so what does this one say then? Oh, the label's different on this. This is UK label. So the model of this is uh, an MP5B2 B2. Sorry, MP582B2. Uh, so slightly different, but anyway, this this was just the British Telecom version, I guess. Um, so these were sort of quite popular at the time. I, I seem to recollect a few friends of mine having these as well. We all got ours together, um, and it was. Uh, quite a useful thing to have back in those days a cell phone and these fitted just about into your into your jeans pocket um, if you're wearing trousers but um, these these were certainly still too large to carry in your shirt pocket um, so antenna goes there I do think I've got one um, fairly now I'll steal that one off that one uh, so let's have a look inside it's not really much much you got um, you got obviously the, the manuals and pamphlets which I've just taken out uh, you got a, a desktop shoe, um, nothing real fancy there, and you obviously got the uh, the charger to go with it. This is obviously a UK phone, so this has got that lovely square three pin, um, and obviously also got the antenna, um, and that's about it really. Um, they didn't really give you much back in those days in terms of accessories or any sort of thing like that um, so that's pretty much all you got however for an extra fee and this was where the upsells came up um, from from the dealerships back in those days um, they could sell you one of these which I also have this is a, a British Telecom J travel pack um, now it's a fancy box basically for a leather case and a, a cigarette lighter charger um, that's pretty much it. Um, it's a huge box for what it is, but this is how they marketed it, and they obviously charged a premium for this. Um, I don't know what I paid for this back in the day. Uh, certainly, I wouldn't hazard a guess, but thirty pounds, forty pounds, maybe fifty pounds. That's 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 probably like sixty, seventy bucks. Um, I don't have a receipt for it, for it, so I, I guess I'll never know. Um, but anyway, um, that's obviously what the, the outer case looked like. Um, and you've got a real flimsy plastic mold with two things in it. The leather case, which I think 
No, this is open. Um, I don't think actually this is seen anywhere. This looks pretty new to me. Maybe it is used. I don't know. Um, I would say if it has been used, it's not been used, used very long. It might have been used a little bit. Um, anyway, it doesn't really interest me that. What does interest me is this. Because without one of these, I don't think I'd be able to power up either those or the one, uh, the, the British Telecom version. So, um, get this stuff out the way. Conveniently, I've also got one of these. This plugs straight into the wall socket. This is just a 240 to 12 volt. It emulates the, uh, the car charger, the car socket rather. So, just power this in. And that's on, great. Oh, I didn't go through these. Um, so you got just the pamphlets really to go through quickly. You got a, a nice little guide as to how much money they were gonna steal from you for placing calls. Uh, of course, the, the phone is analog, so there was no text messaging back in those days, no internet, none of that stuff. Uh, you just basically made and received calls. Um, that was it. So you got a couple, a couple of different tariffs here, prime time saver, prime time city time, lifetime, and lifetime companion. So uh, this is actually a lot more than I used to pay, thinking about it. That's quite a lot more. Um, so the cheapest one would have been that one there, £23.50 a month. Um, no, that was a connection charge, I beg your pardon. But uh, certainly the call charges were extortionate back in those days. If you think peak call charge, 59 pence or pennies, uh, that's, that's like almost, well, in today's money, that would probably be, I don't know, that would be like a dollar ten, a dollar twenty, maybe. Back in those days, it would probably be, I don't know, maybe 90, 90 cents, 95 cents maybe back in those days. So quite expensive, actually, if you think about it. Um, you also got an approved major services center pamphlet. I guess this is all the different independent shops where you could take your phone if you had a problem with it. Uh, Central London, Greater London, South. Yeah, so this is broken up in, in different areas, I guess. Um, so, yeah. And uh, you got the manual um, in a nice little plasticky sort of wallet. Um, so, does it say when it was printed? British Telecom PLC 1994. That gives you an idea of how old this manual is. Um, so, if that was printed 1994, probably available in the shops 1995, I would guess. So, you got a couple of... Uh, customer services numbers and um, a couple of pages worth of how to use the phone really um, nothing fancy really just a normal manual uh, and obviously a list of the accessories and stuff or what you got with the phone is standard um, it's all pretty basic actually this there ain't much to it um, and that was it and obviously the guy who sold the uh, the phone to you so, without further ado, let's power up this baby, because I've been talking too much. Um, I'm not sure this will actually power on. I haven't actually tried it before doing this video, so I really am hoping this will power on. Um, that says top, so I'm guessing... Oh, maybe not then. Oh, excellent. It has powered on. Right, so... Um, I don't really know how to use one of these without reading the manual, but uh, I seem to recall if you do recall zero, zero, that gives you the last dialed number, which is just uh, some random number, I guess. Um, what else can I show you? Oh, the volume, obviously. You press the volume and you would decrease or increase that with that. Um, and obviously the volume, there was the earpiece as well as the, uh, the, uh, the ringer volume. I'm not actually sure how you could change the ringer volume. Not too sure. That displays you the battery level. Um, you can obviously change that. Uh, what else, what else can I show you all? Um, 
There ain't really much else, is there? Function, ringing volume. Function three is ringing volume. There we go. So this is where you'd adjust your ringing volume. Um, and that's pretty much it, I think. Uh, I don't think you would get anywhere with one of these because this particular one operates on the ETAX cellular CIS standard. Um, I believe those ones were amps because uh, they were from the American market. Uh, this is ETAX as well. This is uh, yet another NEC brick. Um, I will try and do a video about these. These were monumental because I used one of these as a scanner. Um, back in those days, uh, you could modify one of these to actually um, use as a scanner. So these were really good. Um, strange thing was that they had two antennas. They had a, a screwy one and uh, one built in. So, um, but that's obviously the guy I bought this one off of. Um, so I'll try and do another video about this because there was a lot to talk about these. Um, certainly this one here, uh, there isn't really much I can tell you. Uh, I don't remember actually much of the commands. Uh, let's quickly take a look inside the manual to see if um, I can conjure up a few things. Call time. Last call time. Press F1. So F1. Call time. Last call was zero. I'll tell you what. What's F2 do? Total call time, 2 minutes 11 seconds, surely that can't be the whole, that can't be everything. Uh, function 4, nothing, I ain't going to press function 5, standard tone, oh this would probably be where you changed long tone, standard tone, maybe this was DTMF, I'm not even sure. Um, function 6, didn't exist, function 7 function 8, function 9, what about function 0, nope, so pretty basic, there's no menu in this or anything, this was literally a couple of buttons and some numbers and you, uh, you have to remember what's what, but this did have a phone book, uh, as far as I can remember this definitely did have a phone book, uh, whether or not I know how to put the numbers in nowadays, uh, that would be anybody's guess without looking through the manual. Um, speed dial memory, manual memory location. So let's have a look. So to store would be function RM store. So I'm guessing you would. I've done that, I've done that wrong, haven't I? Um, so okay, let's do 1 800, I don't know, 555 so to store would be function, recall, store, and then let's go for location 11. Okay, now what? Um, I guess that's it. Um, so recall 11. There we go, we've stored it. So it's recall number 11. So that's the number I've put in. So that works, I guess. Uh, so let's try something else then. Uh, let's try 1 800 800 555. Five, five. Uh, so function recall, and let's put that in location 55. Okay, maybe not, maybe 20. Uh, so if we want to recall that, we would go recall. 20 and that's recalled it so that is the that is the correct way of uh, of, uh, of storing numbers uh, how to delete them I would have to read the manual I guess um, diverting calls there's a whole bunch of stuff here um, but uh, if, if you guys want to know a specific function uh, just drop me a comment I can try and read through the manual for y'all and uh, and tell you how it's done. Uh, there, there's obviously too much to cover in this manual for, for one single video, but um, I know a few a few people have asked for me to do a video on on one of these. Um, so, uh, but uh, there, there is a, a BT Jet as well, uh, which is uh, similar to this, um, which I will try and do a video about in the next few weeks or so um, when I find the phone. Um, so, but uh, this was uh, this was a Jade anyway. So. Um, 
thanks for checking this one out. Um, I will try and get around to uh, to doing a couple more videos more regularly now that I'm back from tour. Uh, so if you got any questions or comments, uh, leave them down below. Uh, and uh, don't forget to uh, like, share, and subscribe. So uh, thanks for watching.